What's up guys, it's Subsy here and Pixel phones have always been known for their cameras ever since the Pixel 2 I believe and this year we have three new Pixel phones so what are the cameras like on this year's Pixel? Well, let's find out. So this video is going to be entirely focused on the camera and the camera system in the Pixel phones for 2020 and it's going to be quite long so I'm going to leave timestamps below in the description so you can skip along to different bits if you want to. The phones that I'm going to be using for this test are going to be the Pixel 4a which came out in August and the Pixel 5 which came out last month, this month, one of them. Now I know there's a third Pixel phone, the Pixel 4a 5G. Um, so a lot of this is going to be equivalent on all three phones, some of it just one or two. And because of that confusion, because they all have the same main image sensor, I'm going to actually put descriptions or stamps on each picture or video that I show showing which one it's taken on and which one it's applicable to because you'll find out soon enough that it sometimes is different between these two phones and sometimes it's the exact same and we'll get into that when we get into that. So first I'll talk about the Pixel 4 I do some comparisons between this and the Pixel 5 for pictures, then the video performance on the Pixel 4a and then I'll switch over to the Pixel 5 and 4a 5G stuff, so the ultra wide camera and stuff like that. But again I'll have the timestamps in the description below. So let's jump into the Pixel 4a first. Now this has a main image sensor which is the same as the Pixel 5 and Pixel 4a 5G and again the same as previous years but it has improved software from previous years so it is different at taking pictures and again it has different software to the Pixel 5 and 4a 5G um, which we'll get into later on but in terms of pure photos that come out of the rear camera if you've seen Pixel photos before you're going to be very impressed and you're going to be very comfortable feel very at home with what you get out of this because it's very similar and by that you can probably tell these are outdoor images and they look very clean. Everything is true to life. Like these greens on the leaves were the same greens that were there in real life. Nothing was oversaturated. Now these may not look completely pleasant to everybody because some people may like an oversaturated look which you get from most Samsung cameras which again is personal preference but in my opinion I prefer to take natural photos and if I want to bump them up afterwards I can because for me it's always easier to add saturation and vibrancy after than to reduce it so I prefer the natural look to my photos and with this you get very very good natural looking photos everything is well lit everything is well exposed and this is all in automatic settings so no tap to focus nothing like that just purely open the camera shoot to take and these are the pictures that you get out of it now as you can see most of these photos are overcast because well in England we don't have that much sun at the moment so uh, there was one day when I got to take this out and it had plenty of sunlight but most of these shots were in cloudy environments but again it's still showing the dynamic range that you can get out of the pixel and the level of detail so if you compare these to previous year pixels they have the same sensor so it's 12 megapixels as well and if you take away this year's flagship phones from other companies so take away the 48 megapixels or the 108 megapixels that you get on some phones and you go back to say the iPhone with 12 megapixels you compare those and the level of detail is great of course when you zoom in because it's only 12 megapixels you do lose that sharpness but from purely a perspective of zooming out looking at it 100% it's completely fine and because of the image sensor not being big, like the new flagships this year, like the Samsung S20 and Note 20 and, well, the S20 Ultra and a few other phones, because the image sensor on this is quite small, the level of depth isn't as big as those, but again, it's still plenty. So if you do a natural bokeh effect without portrait mode, um, here's one of the images I took of that. And again, you get a natural depth of field, but it's not as drastic as some of the other phones. So just bear that in mind if you do want like that natural bokeh. But again, you do get portrait mode. So this is a shot that was taken indoors with portrait mode. And again, with the Pixel, it saves both portrait mode and non-portrait mode. So here's the comparison between the two. And the great thing about Pixel phones is in the photo editor or the photo viewer um, you can switch between the two so if you took it with portrait mode and you don't like it because the effect is not great you can just use the other picture but this gives you like a insight to how the portrait mode works and you know you can get more depth of field if you want to but again it's not always perfect but it is one of the better ones out there. So then let's get into night mode and uh, night mode on Pixel phones has been pretty great. Now I did take some shots in pretty much near pitch black 
but it doesn't look like that in the picture. So I took it like an hour or two after sunset and this was with no street lights. So it was like a park with no ambient lighting around. There were some cars parked behind like quite way back which had their lights on but really nothing was lighting up the subject and now this shot was taken without night mode on so you can see what's happening here you can see how bad it is you can see it's just bumped up the ISO to probably the max that you could get to make it look like a sunset type of time but it's really bad so if you look at 100% um, everything is grainy there's so much noise everything is just blurry there's no focus there's no detail it's just crap but again you expect that right this is why they have night mode so if you turn night mode on it turns to this and this is so much better it actually looks like it was like in the afternoon not even at night and there's so much more detail and if you look at the two side by side you can sort of see the difference if you zoom in 100% you can see the level of detail difference but again with any night mode what this requires you to do is hold the phone still for a few seconds and because of the processor in this, that few seconds is a bit more than, you know, a second. So it is actually a few seconds and uh, the results are worth it. But just know that you have to keep your phone pretty still for some time. And then we come on to the front camera. Now, again, this front camera is the same on Pixel uh, 4a, 4a 5G and Pixel 5. So this is going to be the same result for all of them. And there is no difference when I took pictures from one to the other. Now we took portrait mode photos with the back. Now let's look at the front. Now with the front, um, here's one that was taken on normal mode. Well, it was taken with portrait mode, uh, but here's the sort of non-portrait and portrait versions of them. And you can see the level of detail is actually pretty good. And this is still holding up really well today, which is awesome. And you can see this was like a really bright day and nothing was blown out. There was details in the shadows and in the highlights and the dynamic range just coming out of this is pretty fantastic. And with the portrait mode version of this, you can see that the detail around the hair is actually pretty good. But because my headphones, the Sennheiser Momentums, the color of that is close to the color of the wall behind, it does struggle to know where the edges are for that. And this is where the sensor size becomes an issue. Because if you have a bigger sensor, you get more natural bokeh, so you don't have to use portrait mode. Uh, when you don't have that, you have to use portrait mode and portrait mode tries to guess it uses AI to sort of map out areas around you to know what to blur outside, behind, but it doesn't work that well. But there is a caveat with this, where in the actual pixel photo editing app, which is within the photos viewer or the photos app, you can edit this after the fact. So you can actually change the point of focus, you can change the level of depth, you can go in and change the lighting around your face and it's pretty great the level of control that you get. Now some of these features are only on the Pixel 4a 5G and Pixel 5 at the moment in terms of retouching your face so the lighting point but they are coming back to previous Pixels including the Pixel 4a uh, and the Pixel 4 and 3, 3a all of them I think back to the Pixel 2 which is going to be great and I'll certainly test that on my Pixel 2 XL to see how the performance is with that. Um, when it has all of these new features, which is, you know, it, it sounds really good and it works really well. So that's pretty much all I'm going to do for exclusive to the 4A and I know it wasn't really exclusive because I did talk about the 5 and 4A 5G, but now let's move on to a comparison of the pictures between the 4A and the Pixel 5. Now we can see a lot of similarities in terms of dynamic range with these, just because they are really similar. And the main reason for that is they are using the exact same image sensor and the software is the same, pretty much really close to the same but not exactly the same and I'll get into why that is. So if you look closer you can see the temperature of the images is slightly different. So the Pixel 5 and the Pixel 4a 5G now produce a bit warmer in terms of colours for the photos. Again this is personal preference, some people prefer warmer, some prefer cooler images. Again you can change this after the fact but your preference may vary on what you prefer but again neither is an extreme to either side so it's a very subtle difference and only in some images you can actually tell but again this is due to the newer version of the pixel camera on the pixel 5 and 4a 5g now that's the newer version of the software so we've been told this is going to come to the 4a as well so the image processing that's done there that's new that's going to come back to the 4a as well so you won't see much of a difference there at all in terms of detail, again, because it's the same image sensor, the level of detail is the same, the actual color reproduction looks the same, the saturation levels, everything 
seems pretty identical. So from this point onwards, I'm going to refer to the Pixel 5's main sensor images as across the board. So I'm going to refer to them as for the Pixel 5, 4a 5G and Pixel 4a, just so it's a bit easier to look at them because again, they're very similar. So let's quickly go away from that and go to the Pixel 4a's video performance. Now this is an area that it doesn't share with the Pixel 5 and the Pixel 4a 5G because the actual processor within it, the chipset, is different. So the main image sensor at the back, the videos that come from that, they offer no stabilization, which is pretty bad. I mean, it's probably because the actual CPU can't handle it because there's no dedicated image processing unit or anything like that within here and the GPU is quite low in terms of you know specs performance and that's what it needs for this because what it needs to handle 30 frames a second it needs to know how to you know stabilize the footage and it just can't compute that well I don't know if it can or can't but it's not there yet maybe it'll come back in a software update but for now I can't guarantee that because there's been no statement about the new stabilization features from the Pixel 5 and 4a 5G coming to this so for now the stabilization is just not there you can see this in a clip when I'm walking it's shaky and that means you lose a lot of the detail if you've got it on a tripod or something like that it's perfectly fine and the images are near identical between the two but as soon as you have movement they change drastically and at night time because the image sensor is quite small you don't get natural um, light coming into the sensor as much as you do on other phones so that's pretty bad it's really noisy and just you know you probably don't want this phone for night video unless you have good lighting or you're indoors then it should be fine but outdoors with minimal lighting it's been pretty average and now the selfie camera the selfie camera is the same on all of them again uh, and the actual processing on that seems the same in videos because there's no or seemingly no video stabilization on the selfie camera on the pixel 5 so this applies to all of them and the stabilization seems good just naturally and this was shot on the pixel 4a so you can see the color reproduction is the same as taking a picture it was a fairly well lit day so there was nothing for it to struggle with so now let's compare the videos of the 4a versus the pixel 5 and 4a 5g now all of these videos were taken whilst walking um, or standing still and panning and as you can see the stabilization makes a huge difference now on the pixel 5 the stabilization was set to standard so it wasn't any of the new different active or cinematic mode this was all set to standard you can even see the speed at which it changes exposure and how it does that is slightly different um, there were no focusing differences between the two that was pretty good but you can just see that if you are walking and you know taking a shot whilst running if you want to do that it's, it's going to be quite jittery and off balance with the pixel 4a but with the pixel 5 it's a lot better and i'll get into the pixel 5's video stabilization and everything with the video later on and um, because there is a lot more to talk about about that but let's jump into the pixel 5's camera well we've been talking about the camera the whole time let's jump into the pixel 5's images now again to start off with the detail is fantastic as you can expect apart from the same caveat you have with the 4a which is the sensor size again 12 megapixels to be expected but the dynamic range is just as good and you know it has no issues with focusing or exposure and it even has new sliders in the camera app so you can adjust the shadows and the highlights before you take a shot to see how it's going to look and it, it just has more controls which again should be trickled down to the 4a but they're not at the moment so at the moment this has more features to do in the camera app for the main sensor and then we jump into the ultra wide sensor now this is the new sensor that's on both the pixel 5 and the pixel 4a 5g and this isn't the best quality sensor but again with the pixel processing of images it does look quite good so here are some comparison shots between the two and you can see the normal and the ultra wide versions of them and you can sort of see if you look at it at this size it looks pretty good the color shift between one lens to the other is next to not noticeable and that's one thing that i love about pixel phones because most of it is done with algorithms they've tuned these sensors to be really really good whereas when i use some other phones so the s20 plus or the oneplus nord the color shift between the normal and the ultra wide or the normal and the telephoto is huge in some scenarios 
but with this I didn't find any scenario that had bad colours between the two or different colours between the two, everything just seemed consistent and you can just see that in these images. And not only the colours, the dynamic range stays constant between the two and when I say constant, if your image has sunlight and when you zoom out with the ultra wide, the sun's visible, of course it's going to change. But in the same conditions where you have no extra lighting or shadows, it's going to be the same dynamic range between the two and the shadows are going to be consistent between the two. The details in the shadow are going to be consistent, but the detail overall is not. So in the center of the image of the ultra wide sensor, it's great. But around the edges, especially the corners, things start to drop off quite badly. Now this isn't noticeable when you're just looking at the image zoomed out. When you go into the detail, you can sort of see that everything is a different shape. Now this isn't exclusive to the Pixel, this is on most phones with ultra wide sensors, but again it's still noticeable if maybe more so on this than other phones just because of the quality of the ultra wide sensor. You can really see when straight lines become curves and leaves just seem to fall off and in some photos you even get fringing around the corners which depending on the condition could be quite bad or not noticeable at all but I am still so grateful that they included an ultra wide camera as opposed to last year's telephoto just because even with the quality around the edges when you zoom out it's still perfectly fine and the images still look fantastic because the detail in the shadows, the dynamic range, the colour accuracy for me is to my taste. And again we have night mode. Now night mode is mostly the same as the Pixel 4a but no. Because there's a new feature, there's night mode with portrait mode. Night portrait mode, portrait night mode, one of them. Now here is the same picture that I had with the 4a taken on the 5 with no night mode, just everything off, normal camera. And again you can see it's pretty bad, the noise is huge, just like it was on the Pixel 4 but you expect that. Now with night mode on, again you have something that looks like it was taken in daylight and again the detail is far greater but it only took a few seconds to take the picture, not as long as the Pixel 4a. A bit quicker but still not incredibly quick because there is no Pixel neural core here so it did take a few seconds. And then we come to the new feature which is the Pixel night mode portrait mode thing. And as you can see it adds in that bokeh which on this picture was actually really good. I mean the image wasn't too difficult to cut out for the pixel um, because it had solid lines around it. I didn't try it with anything too difficult but the effect was pretty good. The only issue I had is that it did zoom in quite a bit um, and I couldn't step back so it didn't look as good. So you can see all three of them next to each other. You can see the differences between them and you can see the level of detail between them. Now we jump into the ultra wide at night. So the same picture taken with the ultra wide camera with night mode on. You can see that for some reason it seems to add vignetting to the photo. I don't know why, maybe it's just not brightening up the, the corners, but it is brightening up the rest of the image. But this seems to be sort of a trend that I found with the ultra wide camera on mine at least, where vignetting was an issue. And this shouldn't be an issue because that can be fixed with software and hopefully it will be in the future but it isn't at the moment so vignetting especially in this shot was quite big. And then you can see the um, normal image sensor versus the ultra wide. Um, you can see the level of detail and again in the corners you can see the fringing and you can see the drop off and you can see the distortion. Again it gets worse as you go towards night. In daylight it's far better but again that's expected just because the algorithms can't work that much with less data. Just with, with more noise they struggle. Now here's another one that was taken with night mode and the ultra wide camera. You can see the temperature of this is slightly off. Um, it didn't keep it as well but this was why I chose this picture because it was one off for me at least and uh, I thought it was good to show something bad about the pixel camera. <laughs> which is uh, good to see. But then we come to the night mode of that same shot and it had some difficulty with portrait night mode. You can see that it tried to provide some sort of depth of field and more natural. Instead of cutting out the letterbox it just faded it off and blurred it. Didn't work too well in my opinion. But I'm not entirely sure why that was an issue because I mean from, from my point of view that's a pretty easy picture compared to some of the other ones that it doesn't have issues with. But again that's all algorithms and they get better over time so this may improve. And if you are at night, if you are at night, if you are out at night and taking pictures and there is street lighting, um, the pictures from night mode on the pixel camera with the ultra wide and normal seem to look pretty good. So here are some that were taken with both sensors with night mode on 
um, and it was night so it was pitch black apart from street lights lighting up you know surroundings and the level of noise is pretty small which is pretty impressive. Now I did try to make it challenging by pointing it at lights um, so you can get like highlights or strong highlights that could be blown out and deep shadows and the dynamic range that it got from that was still pretty good and you can see the level of detail is kept and the areas of the pictures that it did illuminate were great and again the colours were as accurate as I could see them in real life. So the greens aren't the most popping greens but I don't care about that. For me, the greens were accurate, the greens were what they were when I took the picture. The reds, the same thing, they weren't like, you don't get one solid red for every shade of red. It has different shades, nothing's oversaturated, nothing's too vibrant. But if you want to, you can do that in post if you want. So overall, the pictures that come out of this, I'm really happy with them and I expected no less to be honest. And these are still, in my opinion, some of the best photos you can take on a phone. And again, others are catching up and they have done dramatically, but in terms of photos, at least purely photos, I think this still takes the lead. Which is pretty cool if you think that the Pixel 4a 5G has all of this and only cost $499. So then we come on to the video and this is where I think that the Pixel lineup has improved the most, but again, it still falls short just to give you a heads up. Now, the first thing I want to talk about, I think it's due to the actual um, chipset being not the highest end, is when you switch between lenses or between uh, zoom levels in the camera app, so even between one times and two times, which is the same lens, you do get some jittering, so it does just jump. It doesn't like smoothly transition, and I don't know why I'm doing that, but it doesn't smoothly transition, it just jumps like frames. In my opinion, I think that's because it doesn't have the power behind it to do like a smooth transition. So it does look a bit jarring when you're shooting something and it's just jumping because everything before that was smooth. It's just not the best experience. So some of the things that were talked about heavily when the Pixel 5 and 4a 5G were announced were the stabilization features. Now first, let's talk about it in daylight. So daylight is when it's going to have the most effect or the best effect because it has more tracking points to the stabilization and um, because if you think about how the algorithm works it has to find points of interest points points on the camera to track as you move to stabilize the footage between those and just you know bring them closer to cl which is why it crops in and let's just take a look at the normal standard version of stabilization and again this was the one that I compared against the Pixel 4 ray earlier so again it's pretty good and it's a huge step up from previous pixels already and in my opinion it's finally reaching to the top of the smartphone charts and again reaching is the right word because it's not there and it just gets blown out the water by the iPhone by the Galaxy series it get, just it's it's not the best yet but it is getting a lot better so apart from standard we have two more forms of movement stabilization. Now I'm saying movement stabilization because there is another one um, which is when your phone is locked. By that I mean that you expect to not have the frame moving. That one I'll get into in a second but the two for active movement is well, one's called active and the other one is called cinematic pan or cinematic something like that. They are for different purposes and with the active you can compare it to the standard. So the same shot that was previously with the um, standard here it is with the active so taking it side by side you can actually see the difference in the active stabilization and it looks pretty good off the face of it but when you look with a bit more detail you can see that it has a bit of a jello effect and you can see that a lot more around the edges when it's trying to keep stuff you know in the frame but your phone is moving and then the building just goes it just moves around like that <laughs> It gets quite annoying, it's not the worst thing in the world, but I definitely prefer the standard stabilization. And I think for normal movement, unless you're like jogging or something, that for me was actually a really good result because it was natural and it was steady enough that you could see everything and it was far better than previous pixels. So for me, it's a step in the right direction. And another thing that I found about standard or active in this case, is that you are limited to 1080p. So, in my opinion, you make two trade-offs. You make a 4K resolution trade-off and you make like a trade-off in actual quality because jello. With uh, the standard mode, you can do 4K 60 or 1, 1? 1080p 60, I don't know why I said 1. So with active, you are limited, but with normal standard stabilization, you can do 4K 30 or 60 and 1080p 30 or 60 if you want to, um, you know, to save data storage space, whatever. 
So then we come to like panning shots where you're not actually actively moving so there's no like up and down effect um, and this will show you some effect from left to right. Let's start with the standard. Now with the standard, again, it's my personal favorite. It just works well. But active doesn't do too bad here, so it is very active, that makes sense. There is not much of a jello effect here. And the actual frames between frames, um, the detail is preserved a lot more than I expected it to be, so that's good. The third level of stabilization plays into effect here, so that's cinematic. And what that does is actually slow the footage down. So all of these were taken with me moving at the same time, or the same speed. But you can tell the cinematic one is just a lot slower and that's to give it a more cinematic look and you can use this to record you know not movies but home movies that look more cinematic and I think it works really well. So here are some more shots that were taken with the cinematic mode. Now one thing to note with the cinematic mode is that it has no audio for obvious reasons because it's slowed down you don't want slow motion audio on your cinematic footage so it's just purely video so it looks pretty great and there's not much for me to complain about with that but again, it's not something that I would use too much because, you know, there's not much cinematic stuff that I would record with the Pixel or with any phone. Just because I don't really record cinematic footage, but your usage may vary. And then we come to nighttime. Now, there's no video night mode, whatever. Here's a shot that I took in challenging conditions because I just wanted to test the stabilization. Now, granted, I was being pretty unfair because most phones would struggle with this because just tracking points on the image are not going to be there and that mixed with the level of noise that you have and the lack of detail and everything that comes along with that especially with a smaller sensor like this you get less light coming through it was a bit unfair for me to do this but here's a video from that and as you can see it's just terrible you wouldn't want to shoot this there was next to no light apart from in front of the camera later on it's uh, pretty bad but then we come to some normal nighttime stuff now by normal I mean that this has street lighting so again the sky was pitch black but it was street lit and now we can compare the different stabilization modes on this. So between the standard and active stabilization you can see that again for me the standard is far better because it helps you not just keep away from a jello effect, it helps you preserve the details. Um, I don't know why, maybe it's because it's trying to over stabilize it. The detail in the active one is less than the standard one. Um, that wasn't really true in daylight but here it is because between frames it's a lot more blurry than the standard one and again the standard one isn't great either at night time so the pixel camera video at night is still pretty bad but definitely definitely stay away from the active one at night because it just makes it a lot worse not only that it actually seems like it's less stable because I don't know, maybe the algorithms are trying to do something which isn't working because of the lack of focus points. It just, it just doesn't seem good. And then we come to the ultra wide sensor at night. Now, this is just bad. I mean, you don't have active stabilization on the ultra wide anyway, so this is all standard. And the stabilization isn't the issue, it's the detail or the lack of detail because, well, it's not really there. This is really evident when you look at the street lights. So if you look at the light itself, you can see like a, a noisy blocky cloud around the light. It's not like a good halo effect. It's like a really low res texture effect, which again, could be improved with a better sensor. It's gonna be hard to improve it with the software because this is where the hardware falls into it, where you can only do so much with the information you're given. You just need more light to come into the phone and give you more data, which this sensor cannot do. So hopefully in the future generations of Pixel phones, the actual sensor is better so the videos can get better because I think now the actual processing of the videos is quite good and the software experience for that is really good. So I think the only thing holding the video quality back now is the image sensor. So that was a pretty long video and apologies for that but I hope it was informative and if you are looking to buy a Pixel, I do hope this helps clarify things and if you're upgrading from previous Pixel, I hope it tells you what you can expect from these and uh, yeah, I hope it clarifies which one you should pick up based on what you want to use it for and just know that a lot of the Pixel software stuff does trickle down and um, it doesn't take that long to trickle down so some of the features in the photo editor have already come back. So this has been a pretty lengthy video and I'll just summarize quickly. The photos that come out of the main sensor are great. 
the detail could be better because the just the resolution isn't there. The main sensor between all three pixels is the same but the image processing is slightly different on the Pixel 4a just because of the, um, the version of the software. And the video differs slightly between the two um, because the stabilization is there on the Pixel 5 and 4a 5G but not on the 4a. The 4a 5G and the Pixel 5 have an ultra wide sensor, the Pixel 4a does not so they benefit from that. But again the ultra wide sensor isn't the best because it does fall off around the edges quite a bit but the Pixel processing and everything brings that to life and it looks pretty good afterwards. So the videos aren't going to blow anything out of the water but they are a huge step up from previous year Pixels so I'm ever so grateful for that because Pixel camera videos were always pretty mid-range and that was where they fell back but not so much this time and they're not like as good as the iPhone or Samsung phones or some other phones but they are far better than before. So if you want a Pixel purely for the camera the experience on the 4a 5G I think fits the buck best because it has the best balance of price to camera features. Um, if you want a good budget phone with a fantastic camera the Pixel 4a is the one to get and if you want the best Pixel you can get and you like small phones the Pixel 5 has an amazing camera, same as Pixel 4a 5G, similar to the Pixel 4a, but again, it's fantastic. And unless you're recording a ton of video or doing print media or you want an ultra wide selfie camera, it's going to be pretty awesome. So what do you guys think? I'm going to have links to the pictures and videos that I showed so you can look at them in more detail. Let me know what you guys think about them. If you have a Pixel phone, how does your Pixel fit? Do you find that the photos are good? Do you prefer more saturated colours or do you want something that's a bit warmer in temperature? Like how do you like your pictures? What do you think looks good to you? Do you want something that's going to be Instagram ready or do you want something that you can show in a photo album or something like that? What do you use your pictures for? Because that's going to determine what type of picture you want from your camera. So I've got plenty more coverage of the Pixel 5 and 4a coming up including comparisons of the performance and especially the 4a performance because it does have a lower end um, Snapdragon 730 processor and a full comparison of the Pixel 5 that's going to be quite in depth but if you want to see those videos be sure to get subscribed so you don't miss them and click the bell icon so you get notified about them but as always it's been Subsy here and I'll see you guys next time.